It's, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here, and, and I, I have to say I've, I've discovered this, this, this place that I didn't know about, and uh, there's, there's an amazing energy here. So uh, thank you for the organizers. And it's also a privilege to follow the, the you know, speak after the, the, uh, the, the previous uh, uh, speaker. I thought the presentation just sets the scene incredibly well. I think in terms of the, you know, the, the, the data and the technology to actually use data and even information, uh, let me just share with you, uh, you know, when, when, when I was a medical student, uh, before, before diving into the dark side, I, I, I remember I was in fifth or sixth year, and the revolution for us was that the, uh, the, the, this book of, 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 of medicines, which was called the Vidal in, in France, which was this big book, had been changed into a smaller format, which was called the Doros, and we could put it in our pocket. That was the revolution. So we could have this book you know, when visiting the patients. And, and uh, so, so that's a long time ago, and I think that we've, we've come a, a long way since then. So I think in, 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 the, in, in, in the few minutes and in, in the presentation, what I want, I'll try to, to express is just to say, you know, how we're trying to deal with the, I think one of the fundamental issues that we, we're, we're exposed to is that a lot of the time, the, the medicine that you're prescribed just does not work. So there are a number of statistics. This is, this is a, 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 something which was presented by uh, Peter Goodfellow. He was a, he's an academic. He used to be the, the uh, CSO of a, of a pharmaceutical company. Uh, there are lots of different uh, statistics that have been done. In some disease areas, um, the, the, uh, uh, the efficacy is, is, is higher. In some areas, like cancer, is, is as low as, as maybe uh, uh, 20%. Um, but globally, I think overall, the, the, the big problem we have is that most of the time, the drugs that are prescribed do not have the desired effect. So everyone has gone to a, to a doctor who tries something, try it doesn't work, you try something else. Now, the, I think the, 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 the big issue there is that people are different and I think if, you, if, if, you, if I, would, I would like you just to do a small experiment, just have a quick look at the person who's on, on your right, and then, then look at me, and then have a quick look at the person who's on your left. Now, if you again look at me, those two people, you would distinguish them, right? If you walked in the street, you would not confuse the two. So obviously, the phenotypes, the external appearances are very different. So why should the inside that you do not see be identical? Right. So, so a drug that is absorbed by these different people is not going to have the same uh, uh, um, metabolism and uh, it will not be metabolized in the same way. It will not have necessarily the same effect. So I think people are getting more and more, obviously, into this thing of, of personalization, understanding people. And you know, doing that, we're, we're, we're trying to collect more and more data. Uh, this is all the, all the genetic data. The, uh, 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 we're doing a lot of gene expression. Um, I think it was, it was the, the, the previous uh, uh, speaker talked about you know, looking at what's happening on the, on the, uh, uh, on, on, on the floor, on the, in the gut. Uh, now there is a, there's these, these experiments which are ongoing of, of characterizing each person's gut. So there are over a thousand little beasts that, that live inside us. Uh, if you dry them, the weight would be over one kilo. So that's quite a big amount of bacteria. If you sequence them, we have over uh, 10 million different reads, so different bits of information. How do we analyze that? So I think I would add into the, the, you know, the, the problem that we're, we're facing is that our goal is to collect all this data and basically predict the future. But the problem is, obviously, getting the data uh, storing it, et cetera, et cetera, as it was uh, uh, said previously, but also analyzing this. So if you look at the, you know, if, if you do an analysis and, and you're, you're provided with, with five, five pages of PDF or, if, or, or better in an electronic format, you have to go through these, you know, this list of uh, um, measurements. How do you combine them? Let's say you have 10 measures, right? If you look at the combinations, that's already 100. If you look at triplets, you've already got 1,000. 
If now you're looking at genetic tests where you may end up with 20,000 bits of information, that's a 500-page you know, you know, rack of, of data. How do you combine these? I think we've moved beyond what is possible to do with just human brain without the help of, of computers. So I think also what's, what's happening is that we're moving more and more into diagnostics which are multi-parametric. So they're called multi-analyte algorithmic tests. So it's, it's a bit of a uh, fancy uh, acronym. But more and more, the industry, the diagnostic industry, is moving towards uh, platforms that can measure multiple analytes. And then you have an algorithm that combines these into the, 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 the prediction. So it's not just I'm, I'm measuring you know, your, your cholesterol level. I'm measuring the uh, um, different uh, uh, levels of, your, of, of blood counts, etc. Is I'm combining these and making a diagnostic. So the role of the algorithms are becoming increasingly important. This is introducing a revolution in the world of diagnostic companies, which were based on uh, I have a molecule, I patented, I, I develop all the reagents around it, and I sell that. Uh, how do you do that if all these become commodities, and the only thing that you can protect at the end of the day is the algorithm? So I think what we're seeing is that the value is shifting more and more from generating the data into doing something with it. Uh, we've seen it in different industries. I think the... Uh, uh, Google has been a good example of, of you know, what you do with, with analyzing data and the value you can get out of it. If you look at, uh, for example, the, the announcements from Illumina, uh, where you can do for $1,000, you can do the, you know, the, the complete sequencing of the genome. I think there, there are all sorts of caveats around that. Nevertheless, it is decreasing the value of generating the data. But the key is, how do you transform that into a decision? So, I think the, the, one of the, the issues is that transforming this data into diagnostic tests is very difficult. We have some, some important fundamental statistical issues where you have lots of parameters with a small number of samples. And if you look at the, uh, the number of multi-marker tests that have been approved by the FDA, uh, the very few, the four, you know, including all therapeutic areas. Now, there are other ways of, of getting to the market than, than, uh, and, and not going through the FDA. But I think it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's an important uh, observation that there are very few. Now, talking about Ariana, that has been an opportunity for us. So we are we're called Ariana Pharmaceutical, and we are exclusively focusing on the data analytics and exclusively working towards developing tools that would have therapeutic effect, right? So, so I think we're, we're really in this, uh, in, in, in you know, trying to, to, um, to use this, this change of paradigm. And this helped us, for us, the first uh, uh, breakthrough was to engage into collaboration with the FDA and to get our tools approved by the FDA to be able to do this type of big data analysis to derive diagnostic tests. The next uh, uh, thing that came from that was that we could then engage into projects with companies that were developing diagnostic tests. These were you know, the, the, uh, the standard companies such as Biorad, Bookers, et cetera, um, which, who were investing heavily into their platform, et cetera, and little into the, the, the data analytics side of you know, how do you combine uh, uh, markers, which allowed us to get into a new business model where we collaborate with these partners, we provide them the intelligent component that combines these markers and transforms it into, it, into the result, the diagnostic result, and we get a royalty uh, from the sales of the, of the diagnostic test. Now, I think this is quite a novel uh, uh, a business model, and I think it also shows the importance of algorithms in, in these type of uh, 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 projects. Now, if you look at this, this, this is our pipeline of, of different, uh, does this work? I don't know whether this works or not. Uh, different uh, uh, projects we have. We also work on, on, on uh, products where uh, instead of 
the product being commercialized by a third party, we commercialize actually the decision support system ourselves. And I'll give you a bit more, more detail on that. This is one of the, uh, the, the, the big data projects that we're working on. I think it's one of the, the most exciting ones is, is real-time diagnostic of brain tumors during surgery. The current problem with brain surgery is that the, the, the surgeon looks at the, the CT scan and then has to, you know, during the operation, take the maximum of the tumor out, but at the same time, obviously, take the minimum out. This is not like you know, surgery in, in, in the gut where you know, 10 centimeters more is not, is not a big, big problem. Here, it is a big problem. So what we're doing with Brooker is that Brooker has, a, has an equipment, an NMR uh, uh, machine, that can measure a little bit over 42,000 markers in almost real time, in, within a few minutes. So this is metabolomic type analysis. And the challenge is to get this, this, this data, so there is no buffers, there is no cleaning of the tissues, there is no preparation. Flesh comes out, goes in the tube, in the NMR tube, and you get the spectra. It's to then transform this into a marker which says, red, you're still in the tumor, orange, you're borderline, green, you're out. So I think it, you know, it's also reducing, these, uh, um, reducing this, this complexity, moving from 42,000 to you know, just, just basically uh, um, one uh, uh, indication. So this is just to show you the type of results that we get. This is on, on this, this uh, precision, et cetera. We're talking about sensitivity and, and, uh, and, and specificity or NPV or, or, or PPVs. Basically, we can come up with, with systems that can have um, around, you can see on the, on the, on the uh, uh, specificity, almost 75% uh, precision. We need to move further and get to the 80% mark to actually be able to roll this out. But you can see the progress that we're, we're making towards having a tool that in real time provides the information to the, uh, uh, to the clinician. So this is the... Uh, uh, currently, this has been done in, in, uh, uh, in 15 minutes. Uh, there's a lot of work in, 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 in trying to, to diminish still the, the, the time and improve the, uh, uh, the specificity. The next project that I want to, to tell you about in, 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 in the uh, uh, next three minutes is this issue of, of providing personalized uh, advice to a clinician in choosing treatment. Now, Thing we, we discussed, you know, is this is differential, personalized. I quite like the word actually precision medicine. Now, in case of oncology, for 20% of patients, roughly, there is a targeted therapy that is known. For about 80% of them, there is no targeted therapy. Right. So, so the clinician has to use what was said as the, you know, the, the, the art of, of, of you know, choosing the right treatment. The difficulty is that we have about 20,000 different markers that have been described. We have about 300 different molecules and protocols which are available. The reality today is that if you go to any cancer center, and these are, you know, if you go to our partners who are the Gustave Roussy in, in, in Paris or MD Anderson in the US, they will end up using the protocols that they know best and often the local protocols. So, Really, what we have engaged in, in, in this, this consortium was MD Anderson, Ben Gurion, and Shem Sheba in Israel, and Gustave Roussy uh, uh, um, in, in Paris. There's also a Canadian and, a, and, a, and a Spanish uh, uh, hospitals, is to develop an algorithm and test it in a clinical trial. So, this is the first time a software uh, to, to actually help choose a treatment is tested in a clinical trial. So in the next slide is a, is a very short cartoon um, of, of the uh, it's a little animation to show you how this, this Oncochem uh, software works. Can you launch that, maybe? Every two seconds, a new case of cancer is diagnosed. Every two seconds, a new case of cancer is Increase the level of success. How can we find the best one for each patient? Using Oncochem. 
Kalyan Pharma has developed Oncocan to help oncologists choose the best treatments. By transforming big data from the body of existing scientific knowledge into a decision support software regularly updated, it uses individual patient data from available sources to rank the existing treatment and protocols. It allows each patient to benefit from the latest results of research undertaken worldwide now. Oncocan has been created and tested by members of the world's number one global consortium of fighting cancer, WIN, including institutes such as Gustav Rusi and Mie Anderson. Ariana Farmer is a key player in five international oncology consortia, enabling Oncocan to exploit cutting edge developments in personalized medicine. Helping select the right treatment, Oncocan will make a difference for every single patient. Let's make a difference in people's lives today. Ariana Farmer, Clinical Data Intelligence. <laughs> okay, so, so, so this is just a brief cartoon to show you the, how this, this Oncocam works. So if I go to the, to the next slide, and you can see the, 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 the report which is produced by, by, by uh, Oncocam. You got it on, on, on the left. So for each patient, you have the ranking of the, of the uh, 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 existing treatments which are suggested to the patient, uh, the rank. The clinician can click and, and question it to say why uh, are, you, are you selecting this. And what we show on the right, these are uh, uh, some of the initial patients that have been uh, uh, recruited in the clinical trial, which is ongoing. And each column corresponds to a patient. So you can see on the, uh, on, on the left column, for example, a patient comes, the existing treatment that the patient is on is ranked by the software 128. The clinician then chooses to change the treatment and select the treatment which was ranked number three. Right. For the second patient, you can see the previous treatments, again in orange, and the clinician chooses the uh, treatment number two, etc. Sometimes it chooses number, number two, number three, number five, etc. So what we're showing is that we are, the clinician does not necessarily choose the top ranking one. We are not selecting the treatment for the patient. The clinician does that. However, we rank them and then the clinician can use his judgment, or her judgment, in order to choose a better treatment. And what we can show, we can demonstrate here, is that we are influencing in the right direction the decision. Now, again, this is a quite a large paradigm shift here. This is the first time a software is tested in a clinical trial. Now, first thing is, you know, you, you can have a tool like this that helps the clinician. So that, that's one way of looking at it, and that has a, you know, that has some value. Now, imagine that at the end of the clinical trial, we can demonstrate that the overall survival of patients has increased in the arm that is using the software. So suddenly, the software has therapeutic effect. Okay, so, so at, the, you know, on, at the same level as a drug. So I think where we're seeing the shifts is that you have on the diagnostic side, you need these algorithms to help you uh, manipulate all this data and come up with a decision. On the therapeutic side, you may end up with software such as Oncochem actually uh, having overall a therapeutic effect which is comparable to what you would expect from a single drug. And I think that has profound implication on the business model of the pharmaceutical industry. And this is why you have a large number of very big IT companies, such as the Google, the Amazons, uh, uh, et cetera, that are getting more and more interested in this field. So, and, and really to, to, to end up, I think we're also getting a lot of uh, public awareness about uh, you know, helping get this type of tool in the doctor's office. And, and I think that is also probably, again, to link back to the previous talk, help ease the uh, uh, you know, moving and, and, and the, the uh, uh, doctors who may not be used to using such tools. And on that, I'll thank you for your attention.